Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sliced Lime back with another advanced commands tutorial. If you haven't heard it in the 17w17 snapshots, there's a new feature with advancements. And that feature lets you run commands as part of the reward for an advancement. This, as it turns out, has pretty far-reaching consequences. You can do a lot of things with these advancements that you can't really do with command blocks. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to use them and what kind of things that you can do with them and why they're so powerful. Now, to start off, advancements are defined in separate JSON files, not in the game. So first of all, we're going to have to know how to get an advancement into the game. I'm not going to go through the details of advancements in this tutorial. I will be making another separate tutorial once 1.12 is out, or at least close to out, with all of the details of how to manage advancements. But for this video, we'll keep it a little bit short. The advancements are found under your save folder, under your world, in a folder called data slash advancements. Once you are in there to get a new advancement into the game, you add a new folder for your namespace. Minecraft colon, as you know, is the default namespace. All of those advancements live under a folder called Minecraft. We're going to make our own folder there instead called Tutorial. Now that we have a Tutorial folder, we can put our JSON files for our advancements into there. I'm going to show you the one I have right now. We're simply naming it commands.json and it contains a basically empty advancement. It has a criteria called nothing, and the trigger for that criteria is a trigger called Minecraft colon impossible. That trigger in turn is one that is made to never trigger. This means that the game will never grant this advancement on its own. It's only available through an in-game command, that in-game command being slash advancement grant. You can also see that we have a reward for this advancement, and that reward is a commands list, which is currently empty. So we're going to start by writing something into that commands list. Now, do note, this is going to be a regular command. Anything that you can put into a command block can run here. One important difference is that the entity that is running this command, the sender, if you will, is the player that is being granted the advancement. So if we just simply do say at s, at s, if you haven't kept up, is the new selector for Minecraft 1.12. There's another video on my channel about it. It was added last week, essentially. So now we have our command with at s in it in as our reward for this advancement. And this advancement is called tutorial colon commands. Now that we have that, we need to get it into the game. If you're in single player, you're in luck, we can simply do F3 and T to reload our resources. This also reloads the advancements. If you're on a multiplayer server, you're less in luck, and if you're on realms, you're going to have a terrible time getting advancements into the game, because essentially, reloading advancements requires a reload of the server, a restart of the server. Anyway, now we have reloaded the resources in our game, and our advancements should be in. That means that we can do slash advancement grant that is followed by name so i'm going to use my own name and then our advancement uh, the advancement is specified as a range so we can in this case do only to get only the advancement we want tutorial and commands so you see it will tell us that the entire advancement tutorial commands was granted to me but it also before that said my name or rather i said my name all right, so we have something running in here. Okay, if we want to run this again, what does that mean? Well, we have to do a advancement revoke on the same advancement. Now it's been revoked and we can run it again. So that's a little bit annoying. We would kind of like to use this in a reusable manner. So let's add another command into this commands list. Let's simply run advancement revoke at s only tutorial colon commands. All right, so now we have a list of commands that sets the name of the player who is getting the advancement and then revokes the advancement from the player. That means that we'll be able to run the same advancement again. So let's hit F3 and T again to reload our resources. There we go. And then now we can grant the same again. And now we're going to see that it says my name. Then we get debug information about the advancement being revoked from me. And then finally, we get the text that the advancement has been granted. That's how it goes. The text that the entire advancement has been granted 
is going to end up last once all of the commands have been done. Now, to discuss a few things about this, we have the revoked entire advancement tutorial colon commands from sliced lime, debug output, or command output. This actually falls under the game rule command block output, even though this isn't being run by a command block. If you switch command block output to false, then you don't see this command output anymore either. We're not going to do that in this tutorial because I find it useful to see the commands as they run to just verify that we've done the right thing. Another thing to realize is that debugging this is far harder than it is for command blocks. If your command succeeds, you get the debug output, just like a command block. However, if your command fails, you do not get error output. That is the same as with a command block. A command block that fails doesn't output anything into the game chat. It just simply logs the error to its own little output box. However, for our commands, we do not have any in-game output box. Instead, we'll have to go and look at the game's log window or log file. If your command isn't working, go dig out the log file. It's under your Minecraft folder and the logs folder under there and take a look at that. You can also switch on the log window in the Minecraft launcher if you need that. So what more can we do with this? Because this was, this was interesting, but not terribly useful at that. We can simply run a line of commands, but we've been able to do that all along with command blocks, so it's not entirely revolutionary. Well, let's try a loop. We recently got the ability to do loops in Minecraft, but let's make a loop in this as well. Uh, scoreboard objectives add value dummy. So let's make a value scoreboard and let's set display sidebar value so we can see it. Now let's add some commands that do some stuff with our value. So in this command, we're going to do scoreboard players add at s value one. So we're adding one to value and then we want to loop. Well, what does it mean to loop? Well, we want to run this whole thing again. So we can essentially do advancement grant at s only tutorial colon commands. That's going to run it all again. But then we're going to be stuck here. So let's not do that just yet. Let's be a little bit more refined. So this at s here is always going to be me, but it can be further filtered. So we can do score value equals 10. So we're only going to grant this advancement again if my score is below 10, or rather is 10 or below. All right, so this means that we revoke our advancement, we add one to value, and then we grant the advancement again, which, as we have learned, will run all of these commands. So that should all happen basically within the same tick. So I'm going to clear my chat output. We're going to run F3 and T to reload the command. There we go. And then we're going to run this again. Uh, grant myself tutorial commands. And then we see lots of stuff happens. So you see at the end of this is granted the entire advancement a whole bunch of times. And that is going to turn out a little bit important down the line. But if we scroll way up here, we can see that I'm saying my name, uh, revoking the advancement, adding the score to the value. And then saying my name, revoking the advancement, adding one to the value, and so on, until we hit 11, at which point the whole thing unravels back. If you are a programmer, and you know programming constructs, then you might realize that this is not a normal loop, this is a recursive function call. What that means is that we're not entirely running this in a loop, we are actually starting the commands over, and then we're going back to where we were once we're done with the thing that we granted. So that brings us to function calls. So we can actually make proper function calls in this model of running commands. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to head over to our text editor again, and we're going to basically make another advancement. And this time I'm going to put it inside a file called function.json. And this one is just the same. It's the stub of an advancement contains basically nothing. So let's say that we wanted to make a function that calculates the square of my value score. So when you grant this advancement to a player, the commands in this function are going to calculate the square of the value score for that player, and then it's done. So how does this function look? Well, we're going to start with advancement revoke at s only tutorial colon function. 
So the first thing we're going to do, and this is going to be a common theme in this kind of command programming, is it's going to revoke its own advancement. So we're basically resetting our state and saying we want to be able to grant this again, if need be. Now we want to do the actual work, which is going to be score, scoreboard player's operation at s value times equals at s value. So this will multiply the player's value score with itself, which is more commonly known as calculating its square. And that means we're done with that. Let's go back to the commands advancement and let's call this function in here. So instead of adding one to value, we are going to square the value of the value. <laughs> so advancement grant at s only tutorial colon function. So now we're granting that function, then we're testing whether the score is still less than 10, 10 or less, and in that case we're repeating ourselves. So let's go back into the game, reload our JSON files, there we go, and we're gonna do a scoreboard players set at s value to 2, because otherwise this will turn out badly. All right, so we have a value of two, and we want to square that value until it becomes 10 or more. So let's grant ourselves the tutorial commands advancement again, and stuff happens and my value ends up being 16. So what should have happened now is that we squared the value until it became more than 10. So it was two, we squared it once, we can see I said my name, one pass in this loop happened, then we ran the function, the operation was applied, and the value should now have been 4. 4 is not, as you may know, larger than 10. Which meant that I say my name again, because we keep doing the loop, and it's going to revoke the function advancement, which means we call the function. The operation was applied successfully, so 4 times 4 is 16. And then we were done with the function, the value was more than 10, so we'd stopped the loop. And granted the entire advancement and the whole thing unravels back down. And if I run it again, that's fine, then we're going to run it at least once, right? Because the function runs once before even checking whether it should call itself. So I do that and it multiplies my value score with itself again for 256. Now of course this is a very simple example function, but you could put any amount of complex logic in there and it would run right there, right then, before continuing on with the commands that were in the list that granted that advancement. So what is the difference between this and triggering a command block in the game? Well, first of all, if you trigger an impulse command block in the game, there's a one tick delay. This happens instantaneously. Second of all, this is a proper function call. It stops doing what it's doing in the list only to continue when it's done whatever you asked it to do. As such, the advancement runs the commands in the second advancement first, then returns back and keeps doing what it was doing. And this goes, by the way, also for a command in a command block chain that grants an advancement. For all intents and purposes, it will stop running that chain, run the commands in the advancement reward, and then return back and continue on in the chain. And of course, this does not have to be triggered by a slash advancement command, which you could do, by the way, either by a player directly, like I've been doing it, or by using a command block to grant the advancement on a player. It could also be given by any other advancement trigger, so you could have the game automatically trigger your game logic for you, simply by detecting the triggers like a normal advancement would. This is a massive, massive difference, is something that we have basically not been able to do before, or only been able to do, do before with a lot of strange wiring of chain command blocks. So this is probably going to be a massive update. It also has some other benefits, namely the fact that you don't have to care about spawn chunks anymore. This logic just exists in the game, it's like game rules. It is scripting on the side of Minecraft rather than inside of the game world. So, are there any drawbacks? Yes, as it turns out, there are definitely some drawbacks. First of all, an advancement always, always operates on a player. This means that to run an advancement, 
a player has to be online. So if you're working with something on a server and the player logs out, then you might be in trouble. Second of all, advancements run on one player and can run on more players. This means that if you want to trigger some generic game logic off of this and logic that isn't really specific per player, for instance, you want to calculate the running score or update the round status or something in a minigame, well, you still have to select a certain player to run this on and make sure that only that player gets granted the advancement with your game logic. This isn't impossible to deal with, but it is a problem that needs to be dealt with, and it's important to know that that problem exists. With that power also comes some responsibility. It is definitely possible to mess things up with this. So because you basically have a function stack in the way that a normal programming language would, you now also need to manage text stack and make sure that you don't get stuck in infinite recursion and overflow the stack and all kinds of badness like that. And of course there's also the problem of the debugging, which is not accessible in-game anymore, you'll have to go and dig out in the log files and such. Still, I think this is super powerful and will be very interesting to see where mapmakers take these new techniques. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Like I said in the beginning, I will be making a bigger tutorial about advancements and their formats down the line, but I want to give Dinnerbone and the others on the Minecraft PC development team a little bit more time to stabilize things and decide exactly how things will look before we do that video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer whatever questions you have. This has been Sliced Lime. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.